Hi, looks like we're here, so let's get started. So today I've got an 820-3435 board. It actually appears to be turning on because I get, my CPU starts to get hot when I plug it in, but for some reason I get no green light on my charger. So I'm gonna walk through what's causing this and then perhaps leave early, but don't tell anybody because they'll be jealous. So my CPU is getting warm, but I have no green light in the charger. Now, I always usually walk through the one-wire circuit with, um, with you before I go through this, but I can't because this is a MacBook Air where the one-wire circuit is hidden on the DC inboard. So let's see if I can just walk you through this on an older board, and then we'll get to how it's laid out on the newer board. So the entire purpose of the one-wire system is to ensure that the charger voltage never goes into the sensor voltage. So what do I mean by that? Well, the charger for a MacBook has three basic concepts. 18 volts, which is power to the board, ground, which is obviously needed to complete the connection, and then we have this other line, SIG, which has adapter sense. This is where it gets a little bit more different than um, what it's like on typical PC chargers, because PC chargers usually have hot and ground. They don't have a sense line. Here we have a sense line. The uh, charger is going to want to talk with the machine, and then the machine is going to want to talk with the charger before you get that green light and it turning on. So. The problem that occurs here, you would think that you could just attach the adapter sense line over here directly to the system management controller. So adapter sense goes to this chip before it goes to sys1 wire, which goes to this chip over here, U4900, which is the SMC. Now, every now and then the DC inboard is going to fail. So this thing over here, let's say this thing fucks up and it decides to send 18 volts to the adapter sense line. The adapter sense line is a 3 volt line, right? Adapter sense is a 3 volt line, yet this is an 18 volt line. So what happens if this goes to that and it goes straight to the SMC? Well, then the SMC is fucked. So U6900 exists to stop 18 volts from going to the SMC in the event of a DC inboard failure. By the way, if you ever want to be able to tell if a DC inboard has failed, what you can do is you can measure the adapter sense line on the DC inboard. If you're getting DC in mains voltage on it, if you're getting that 16 volts from the charger on it, you know your DC inboard has failed. This is particularly useful in machines like the older unibodies where you have to take apart the entire motherboard just to replace the DC inboard. If I want to tell if it's the motherboard or the DC inboard really quickly, I'll measure the adapter sense line on the DC inboard, and then, they, and then I can say, no, it's your motherboard. But you didn't take it out. And I go, no, 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 you're getting three volts in adapter sense. That means your DC inboard is good now. Pay me. Come on. Pay me. Pay my money. So over here, this is on one of the older boards, and I can show you what U69... Uh, 100 and U6901, these two components for the one-wire circuit look like on one of these older boards. And then you can tell me if you can find it for me on the newer one. Jeez, these boards have all been ripped off. All right, so we're going to go over to an older board over here and show you what these two look like. So on the older board, this is U6900 over here. This is a nasty looking board. And this is U6901. So this is what these two look like, U6900, U6901. U6900, U6901, 6900, 6901. Now remember what those two look like. And remember the circuits. You have SMC, BC, AC, OK coming here to power this chip. Uh, not power, to send the signal that tells this logic gate to open and send PP3V42 over to U6900. So you need SMC, BC, AC, OK. You need PP3V42 to power this logic gate. And then you need Sys1 wire to go back and talk to the computer. Now let's look at my schematic from a MacBook Air. Over here we have Sys underscore one wire. And that's going, to a uh, that's going to this LIO connector. And then SMC BC AC OK is going to that LIO connector. And PP3V42 is going to that connector, which is J9500. J that's over here. And if we look at that connector on this board, it probably looks just fine. Uh, let's see. So we look at this. And that's a pretty looking connector. I see nothing wrong with that connector. Looks fine by me. So let's plug it in. 
And let's see if you can tell me where you find U6900 or U6901 on this DC inboard, if at all. So let's look around the DC inboard over here. And hey, well, we don't have a schematic for the DC inboard, but that looks pretty familiar. What do you know? We have U6901 and U6900. So what we could do at this point is see if we're getting PP3V42 on U6901 on this DC inboard. So let's check that out. And by the way, uh, I'm not sure. Check it out. I've got a surprise for everybody here. Ha! I got it back. All right. So on our main motherboard, it looks like we are getting 3.42 volts. So, but when we go onto the DC inboard over here, it looks like we're getting 0 0.03 volts for PP3V42. I wonder where that's coming from. So if we look over here, you'll notice that there is a rip on my DC inboard. And this may just be very lucky. Wouldn't it be cool if this was a DC inboard repair? I feel so cheap fixing a DC inboard. But you can see here that we have a break in the DC inboard. So what I can do, well, what I could do, I could replace the DC inboard. But for fun, what we can do is we can scrape away the copper. We could scrape away the, the, what's covering the copper trace and then complete it. So over here, you have all these points that are designed for testing. I don't know if it's for me or a machine or the Apple. It's probably for the guys at the Genius Bar, because I'm convinced that, you know, when you walk into the Genius Bar, they, they, they take out the multimeter immediately and get straight to work. So what you're looking to do here, what these, all, these are all for, these are test points. Now, the problem is since th these are exposed, that they can be corroded. So for example, see this over here? This cannot be corroded because it's coated by something. Uh, this over here is not going to be corroded because it's coated. But where they, with this over here, this bare copper, this bare metal, that can be corroded uh, when water hits it. So I'm going to do something here that I never thought I would do in my life, which is repair a DC inboard. I mean, if this is not as cheap as it gets, I don't know what is. So let's get to work, and we are going to fix a DC inboard. Yes, I am, the, I am that cheap. All right, so... Reminds me of the places that used to fix the iPhone 4 home button because they didn't want to pay a dollar or two to replace it. So let's get to it. I'm going to turn on my fume extractor here. You should never be breathing in any of these fumes and flux and junk and crap. It's not good for you. Now the problem here is that this DC inboard is not going to sit down on the desk nicely because it's, it doesn't have any weight to it. So this is going to be a bit of a pain in the ass. Well, let's see if we can make it work. Chris, what do you have in your queue for the day? So we've got a little bit of flux there. And this is how we do it. I'm really liking this turned around office thing. I love being able to sit down and actually feel comfortable in my chair. It's been a long time since I've been able to do this. Uh, it's actually been since I had that alternative office in the beginning of 2015. Now we're going to run a nice little jumper wire which I'm sure I didn't throw away while I was turning my office back. Aha, of course I didn't. The hole in the floor is no longer sucking me in. The hole in the floor is back there, so I'm no longer victim to it. It's great. I love it. I have an office that I don't hate anymore. I shouldn't say that. That I don't incredibly... Yeah, okay, don't hate, actually. Yeah, that, that's the right way to put it. Dislike, maybe. Hate, no. Now I just got to fix my damn stereo again, and I'll be set. All right, so I got my wire. Beautiful.
Now we're going to plug this thing in, and we're going to have a green light. And this will be my cheapest repair that I've ever done. Fixing a fucking DC inboard. What? Light. I just repaired a DC inboard. <laughs> I feel so sunny. <laughs> oh, did you get oh. the wire? Yeah, no, no, I, look, this is the wire. Uh, you can't see shit because of the damn chat window. All right, oh. see that? Swag. Oh, well, I don't have a fan plugged in. But the CPU gets hot, so I'm assuming I have a fan spin. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> That's what you have to do on the new machine because they don't have the they don't have a fan that spins anymore immediately. We'll flux smoke on it. <laughs> Quality assurance, baby. It's not like we're gonna get Apple authorized anyway. Might as well <laughs> not give a shit. All right. Hmm. Oh, man. So that was that. Anyone triggered with the wire not looking isolated? It'll get conformal coded. That's what this stuff's for. You have to ultrasonic it first, and then I got this. Silicone modified conformal coating. It's awesome. That is how we do it. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. We'll do the same. I li very much liking the pay it forward attitude. That is the right way to go through it. Whatever I learn, I try to pay forward and I hope all of you will do the same. Okay, let's see. What else do I got? Oh God. Oh God, no. Oh, I have a terrible one. I have a terrible one, and I think I may just wind up doing that later because that looks like, yeah. Yeah, that's demoralizing. Okay, so I'll be back later because the rest of the stuff that I have to do is completely demoralizing and a complete waste of time to do on camera. None of it will work. So that's it for today on our very, very short stream. And as always, I hope you learned something. But be Let's see, I'm working on a hardware mod plus PC software to convert the BM uh, I gotta resize my damn chat window. BM235 to a serial multimeter for when your tech power dies again. I'll let you know when it's ready. Thank you for the videos. Thank you for the new multimeter. Yeah, I, what I'm doing here is, uh, I guess we, we should go over another topic here. So, this is, this is probably gonna get me in some shit. But my mother from about four or five years old taught me of this concept called the infinite warranty. She, she, my mother used to call this the lifetime warranty. So my mother used to, uh, I didn't get a lot of toys as a kid. Like once a year we would go to Toys R Us and I would get something. But it would very much piss her off that a lot of the toys would have a three month warranty. And many of those toys would fail four months in. And you would go back to Toys R Us, and if you were honest and said this doesn't work, they would go, fuck you, you know, three-month warranty, blah, blah, blah. So what my mother used to do is she would buy me another one of the toy that, that stopped working after it stopped working, and then she would return the old one in the box for the new one using the receipt for the, for the new toy. And she used to call this the lifetime warranty, uh, which is pretty much what I plan on doing with this tech power piece of shit right here every time it dies, because again... Um, I mean, yeah, it's 50, bu it's 50 bucks, it's 50 bucks. I mean, I, I know, I know, I can't expect the world from a $50 multimeter. But uh, no, I'm not going, no, I'm not going to spend 50 bucks on a multimeter that lasts two weeks. But I do want a multimeter that I can use with the, um, with the software here. So I'm just going to keep buying it. I'm going to keep sending it back and keep buying it and keep sending it back and keep buying it and keep sending it back. Um, yeah. Thanks, Mom. Lifetime warranty. So that's it for today, and I hope that you learned something.